Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call the meeting to order. I need a motion to uh, go into the Committee of the Whole. Moved by Councillor Hall, seconded by Councillor Arnold. All of those in favor, it is carried. Before we go into uh, the presentation, I should introduce for the viewing audience the members of council and staff that are here. On my right, the left of the screen is Mr. Darren Light, our Director of Corporate Services. Paula Kuzak, who is the Deputy uh, Corporate Officer. Then we have Carolyn Machada, Manager of Legislative Services. Francis Chung, our CAO. Councillor Jack Arnold. Councillor Rosemary Wallace is unfortunately not able to be with us this evening. Councillor Ted Schaefer. I'm Mayor Peter Fassbender. On my left to right is Councillor Gail Martin. Councillor Terry James. Councillor Dave Hall. And our other staff table, we have Mr. Gerald Minchuk, our Director of Development Services and Economic Development. Mr. Gary Vleeg will be making the first presentation. And we have uh, our Fire Chief, Mr. Rory Thompson, and Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture, and Community Services. And the Committee of the Whole meeting tonight, the purpose of it is uh, for the public to comment on the proposed trail names. And uh, Mr. Vleek, I will let you make the presentation. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, members of council, staff, and the public. A uh, very brief presentation. Um, the council has seen this before. The uh, Parks and Environment Advisory Committee of Council um, has been considering uh, developing names for various trails uh, throughout the city uh, over the last uh, period of time. and. Um, back in November they came up with a list of names that they've uh, put forward uh, for Council's consideration. Um, Council did consider that uh, list of names back in November. That, that list of names along with the associated maps was uh, published on our website uh, to invite comment. Uh, to the best of my knowledge we've not received any comments uh, with regards to these names. Um, for Council's information uh, we have uh, five uh, um, trails that uh, were that uh, are being uh, proposed to be named. Uh, the first trail is um, trail number three uh, in City Park. So uh, this location is shown on on the screen, and that trail was pr is proposed to be called City Trail uh, City Park Trail. And the next one is uh, shown on the map as number four, and that's at the Dog Off Leash Park and that uh, trail is proposed to be called dog, the Dog Park Loop. And then at Trail 6, uh, at this location, uh, the proposed name is the Pleasantdale Creek Trail. And then at uh, Trail listed as number 7 on the map is the Muckle Creek Trail. And then finally, uh, in the, uh, on the extreme northwest of the map, uh, around Bryden Lagoon, uh, the Bryden Lagoon Nature Trail. And those are the names that are currently being uh, proposed uh, for those locations. Uh, once Council has selected uh, the appropriate names for the trails, then staff will be working on developing a, a signage plan for those trails. And with that, um, staff are available to answer any questions that Council may have. Thank you. Mr. Chung, do you have anything you wish to add? No? Uh, Councillor Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to staff through the mayor, have you uh, found out anything on the Rotary Park name? Uh, south of Great Crescent, I believe it's on 203rd, there's a sign that says Rotary Park uh, Trail. Have, have you done further investigation to call out the entire trail network, the Rotary uh, Trail system or, or such? Uh, Councillor Schaefer through the chair, um, based on the research the staff have done to date, uh, the best that we can tell is uh, that Council did pass some name, uh, a rotary, uh, a name for that trail, the rotary, um, my apologies, but the, the exact wording of the trail name escapes me at the moment, but it does include the, the, the word rotary in it, and based on our knowledge and our understanding, uh, we believe that that is the trail that uh, is the primary trail that runs through the Nicomechal floodplain. That's our understanding. Um, we're still looking into it further, and we will be putting forward a report for Council's consideration. Great. I thought it was the, the entire network was the rotary trail system, and 
it had to do uh, going back to when Rotary had paid to have uh, uh, the updates done and as well as through the Rotary Club the paving that was done uh, on the on the trail system but uh, I could stand corrected on that thank you so we uh, will bring a report back once we get some more information thank you uh, Councillor Martin thank you mr. mayor if I may um, I just want to clarify trail six is now going to be the Pleasantdale Creek trail and it says here floodplain to hydro wider right-of-way behind HD Stafford do you mean in front of HD Stafford not not behind because Pleasantdale Creek goes right up to the hydro right-of-way right that's correct so that whole trail system south of Great Crescent to the hydro right away will be Pleasantdale Creek Trail that's that's correct okay okay and just the other question I would have <coughs> I've been in Langley a long time I, I've never heard of Muckle Creek is that that's I mean that, obviously it's there but that's that's staff's understanding of the name of that particular creek. Okay. I don't have a, a great deal of history on it myself, right. but that's our understanding that that is the, the correct term, name for that creek, Muckle Creek. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from members of council? Seeing none, um, there isn't a large crowd out there. Uh, if there was anyone from the members of the public that had a comment, I'd be happy to do that, but I don't see anyone, so... I would uh, accept a motion to rise and report. Moved by Councillor Arnold, seconded by Councillor James. Um, to um, our manager of legislative services, uh, maybe I missed it, and if I did, I do apologize, but I don't see this being dealt with in the regular agenda. Did I miss it? In case there had been any comment from the public, the final um, report will come forward to the meeting next Monday. Okay, great. Thank you. We have two back-to-back, -back, so I just wanted to be sure we weren't missing something. Uh, all of those in favor? It is carried. We'll now move into the regular agenda. And I wanted to make a note that, and it'll become clear later, but item number C under administrative reports I'd like you to strike that off the agenda, and uh, it deals also with uh, bylaw 2904, the first and second reading to establish the rules of procedure. And I think everybody will be clear why we're taking it off at this meeting because uh, I have a recommendation for council when we get to that item. So that said, um, the first thing I need is a motion to approve the regular minutes from December the 17th, moved by Councillor James. Seconded by Councillor Schaefer. Any errors or omissions? Seeing none, all of those in favor, it is carried. We have no petitions, delegations, committee minutes, so we'll move right into the Mayor's report. Our next meeting will be next Monday, the 21st of January, and then the next meeting after that that will be televised is uh, February the 4th, 2013. Moving into Metro Vancouver, do you have anything, Councillor Martin? No. Any questions on Metro for Councillor Martin before I move on? Seeing none, moving on to library happenings. Councillor Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple of items. Uh, on Monday, March the 28th, there's a monthly art critique, and that's here from 7 till 9. On Monday, March the 28th, from 7.30 till 8.45, there's a teen writers group. And, or, and on Saturday, February 2nd, there's an aromatherapy. Um, it's learn a more natural approach to some common health problems. And that's uh, from 2 till 3 p.m. Um, here in the library. And if you have any questions, feel free to call 604-514-2855. And that's everything. Thank you, Councillor Schaefer. Uh, no questions for Councillor Schaefer. Moving on to the engineering update. Mr. Chung, um, Mr. Vlieg is going to take that. Thank you. Mr. Vlieg. Thank you, Your Worship, members of the Council. A um, few things to update Council on for the month of January. Um, as Council and members of the public are probably aware, um, City staff are working on 48th Avenue 
um, doing some water service changeovers from uh, an old water main to a new water main. As well, uh, work has uh, started on uh, the Douglas Recreation Center parking lot expansion uh, to increase the parking supply. And um, the inclement weather hasn't helped us, um, so we had hoped to have the project uh, substantially complete by the end of this week. Unfortunately, uh, the weather isn't cooperating, so uh, it'll, be, it'll be just a few days longer than that. Hope to, hope to have it completed, uh, substantially complete by the end of next week. Now the big thing that has been happening within uh, the city as far as the Engineering Parks and Environment Department is concerned is the change to the solid waste collection. Uh, the organics collection started on January 2nd, uh, 2013. So the whole Green Can program has gotten kicked off. Uh, associated with that, of course, was uh, a new solid waste calendar um, that you see in front of you. And um, the fact that now we are having um, weekly collection of recyclables, weekly collection of the green can, and bi-weekly collection of garbage. Hence uh, the slightly uh, different map than what we've had in previous years. We now have A zone and B zones uh, by coloration. And um, that was all, all of this material was distributed to all of the single family households um, prior to Christmas. Uh, last year. The, um, we've been handing out uh, two stickers or decals uh, to every household. Um, a number of people have come in requesting extra decals. Um, they were, have been available at City Hall, at Douglas Rec Center and at Tim's. And we've also been posting um, a fair bit of information up on our website uh, and through our social media. And it's proven to be a fairly popular item in both. Uh, we have had some response uh, from the community. Um, the top four uh, questions that we've received, um, and I'll go through, the, through those for your information. Uh, the one of the first questions was, well, when will multifamily complexes receive organics collection? As Council is aware, uh, more than half the residents uh, of the city uh, live in multifamily developments. Um, the answer to that question is that staff are going to continue to work with uh, Metro Vancouver um, to, uh, to develop an organics collection program for multifamily. Uh, when specific people have called, we have advised them that uh, they can, through their strata council, work uh, with their waste collection uh, company since the, the garbage is collected privately for multifamily, they can work with their uh, waste collection hauler to uh, make arrangements to, to do organics collection if they so wish. Uh, the next question uh, came up fairly frequently, including in letters to the editor in the paper, um, is what about the city considering using large toters like the city of Surrey? Um, when the contract uh, goes out for tender, one of the options that will be considered at that time and, and presented to Council for Council's consideration is to whether or not to move to uh, using uh, the large toters. Uh, when you go to a large toter program, that also uh, requires you to use uh, automated uh, pickup uh, through with the vehicles. Those vehicles are uh, considerably more expensive than the standard garbage truck. In addition, uh, as a point of reference, um, some people have said, uh, and it's been quoted in the paper, um, why don't we get the free large toters like the City of Surrey? Uh, we've contacted the City of Surrey. The City of Surrey um, procured 300,000 of those toters at a cost of $15 million. Those toters um, are being amortized. They were paid for out of uh, general revenue, and that money is being paid back to general revenue uh, over a 10-year uh, amortization period through the fees that are being charged to property owners. So that works out to be $5 per toter per household per year. So in other words, $15 um, per household of your garbage fees is going to pay uh, those for those bins. Um, now the question that was asked was, uh, will garbage collection, um, with the garbage collection every two weeks, will my taxes be reduced? Um, the, uh, as Council is aware, the staff are proposing to hold uh, the fees for garbage and recycling collection uh, for 2013 at 2012. 
basically at 2012 levels. We are continuing to monitor uh, the tonnages. There is a difference in the tipping fee for green waste as opposed to garbage. Garbage is currently being charged at $107 per ton, and our green waste charge is $53 a ton. And uh, those cost savings, uh, the, the degree to which we are going to achieve cost savings, of course, is completely dependent on the degree to which uh, people transfer their organics out of the garbage and into, their, um, into the green can. Uh, subject to that, we'll be monitoring it and then uh, bringing that information forward to Council so that Council can consider um, uh, what and how to deal with uh, the cost savings that we hope to achieve. And the last question, um, which has come up a, f a few times, is why can't we use the compostable uh, plastic bags uh, for the organics, Because particularly since it's neater, uh, perceived to be neater and tidier, particularly for under sink um, containers. We've looked into that. Uh, the fundamental problem is, is that it, uh, to quote Metro Vancouver, is that it interferes with the composting process. Currently, the composting process is used within the region typically takes six to eight weeks from the time the material is delivered to the facility to the time that it's ready to be uh, uh, sold or reused as compost. Unfortunately, the compostable plastic bags take considerably longer than that to break down, and therefore they interfere with the composting process. So those are the top four um, uh, questions and responses that we've received. Uh, there have been some other negative responses, but overall uh, it seems to have been quite positively uh, of, uh, received. Uh, staff did receive a fair number of phone calls and inquiries uh, the first week at, into the new year. Um, that dropped off considerably uh, last week, and uh, we're early into this week. And so far, haven't, I personally haven't received any phone calls. And with that, I'm here to answer any questions that Council may have. Okay, I just one clarification. The green compostable plastic bags, but the uh, craft compostable bags can be used, correct? That's correct, Your Worship. Thank you. So I have Councillor Hall and then Councillor Martin. Uh, first question is about the DRC parking lot expansion. Uh, there were some trees to be removed uh, and and planted elsewhere. Do we do we have a location for the replanting of those trees? Councillor Hall, through the chair, uh, those trees were replanted within the Douglas Park. So they're still within the park. Yes, they are. Thank you. Okay, on uh, on garbage, um, one of the suggestions in other municipalities has been that there be a uh, possibility for the resident to choose between two sizes of cans. So we currently um, have an allowable limit of two, but many people are likely only to fill one can every two weeks. When we renegotiate the contract, is there a possibility with uh, in putting that out to tender that we go to the system that other municipalities have offered where if, uh, if you have a large volume you pay more and if you have a lesser volume you pay less because your can is small? Uh, Councillor Hall for the Chair, uh, all options obviously will be considered. Um, the principle of user pay definitely does apply. Uh, my understanding of the city of Surrey's uh, uh, system when it comes to the garbage collection is you can opt for a smaller container for garbage if you so choose. However, you don't get a discount on your garbage rates. However, if you go opt for the larger container than the standard, um, then you do pay a higher fee. So there are options open, and we'll be looking at those options and then putting those forward for Council's consideration in terms of what level of stratification Council want, would like to see uh, in terms of garbage and recycling collection fees. Could I just ask a clarification, um, just for my own edification? One of the things I remember is our size of cans is because they are physically lifted by individuals, so there's a safety issue that if you go larger, there is a chance that WorkSafe would not approve those from a 
That that's correct, uh, Your Worship. The the size limit on the city's cans is is a direct result of WorkSafe regulations. The only way to go to the larger bins, such as what Surrey and, and other communities are using, is if you go to an automated collection system. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Hall. So just for clarification, though, if uh, mm. we, we might then have the option, though, of reducing, if a resident chose to only have one can every two weeks, that would suggest that there's less volume of garbage. So rather than reducing the size of the actual can, somebody could have the option of just going to one can every two weeks rather than two. Um, following that up, um, our diversion rate that we're currently working on is 15%. Uh, is that correct? For uh, Councillor Hall, through the Chair, for budget purposes for 2013, we were looking at assuming a base of 15% diversion from garbage into the green can. So as a means of incentive to the residents of Langley then, um, what might be the the dollar projection if if we were to uh, I don't know double that and go to thirty percent diversion? So if we're currently paying what's the uh, what's the amount one hundred and nine dollars or something like that, what might be the possible reduction if people really get involved in this and divert more than what we've predicted right now at fifteen percent? Um, Councillor Hall through the Chair, I don't have the exact figures at my fingertips. However, uh, at a 15% diversion, we were looking at about 150,000, uh, let me make sure I get my units correct, uh, 150,000 kilograms of diversion. Um, so at 30%, we'd be looking at 300,000 kilograms, so 300 tons. No, it's got to be, I'm sorry, I'm getting my units wrong. I just don't have those numbers at my fingertips. But um, we can uh, we can get back to council on that in terms of what the dollar figure is. At 15 percent, we felt that uh, the costs to the city uh, and to city taxpayers would would be even for what they were for for 2012 compared to 2013. So anything above 15 percent, uh, we felt that we would start to see a reduction overall net reduction in cost. So I apologize for putting you on the spot for the exact dollar figures, but suffice to say, if the residents were to embrace this program, uh, one can't make the assertion, as some people have in, in letters and, th and things, that we're not providing an incentive for people to get in and not saving any money. There's potential money savings yes. if they do divert more, and if the residents were to embrace the program, one would expect some dollar savings along the way. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vlieg, the uh, multifamily organics collection, if I could stand corrected, I believe is going to be mandatory on, in 2015 for multifamily. Is, is that correct? Um, uh, Councillor Martin, through the chair, uh, according to the Integrated Solid Waste and Resource Management Plan as approved by the province, um, it's not only multifamily, but the, the institutional, commercial, industrial yes, sector yeah. is also supposed to be, and that's all by 2015. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And the other question that just came to mind when, when the mayor brought up the, um, the craft bags, I have seen, uh, probably at conferences somewhere, small craft bags. Yes. Is there anybody in Langley that sells those small craft bags? Because that would certainly solve the problem of, of you know, putting your waste into some kind of a container, a bag, actually. London dr Drugs, Home Depot, okay. Canadian Tire. Good. So yeah. that's good to know. I yeah. mean, it, because it, it is much better than sort of dumping it in a pail and then take it, dumping your pail into the garbage. So that's good. Maybe that's something that we could put on to our residents when they call and ask about the, yeah. the uh, compostable plastic bags. Yes. Thank you. I was uh, red tagged this week because I bought the green compostable bags because I thought that they were usable, but I also got the craft ones at the same place. And that's why I asked Mr. Vlieg about those because there is a cornstarch component in them. They're not polyethylene. The green, uh, what look like plastic bags, and they are plastic, but uh, apparently they just won't break down, as he explained to me. So I have a lot of green 
bags if you want to store anything. Uh, but we've been using the craft bags under our sink and the smaller ones, and they, they work just fine. Um, Mr. Mayor, if, if I may be so bold, you can use those, though, for your garbage, so that will actually help um, because those bags will then break down in the garbage stream because the garbage goes into the into a landfill, and then the, then those bags will break down. Then there's enough time there. So I'll just down. have a much more smaller garbage bags. There you go. Till I get rid of them. Till you get Thank rid you. Happy to use them because they do break down. That's for sure. That's why I bought them. Any other questions before we move on? Seeing none, we'll move on to the recreation update. Mr. Chung, Kim Hilton's going to. Good evening, Your Worship, members of Council, fellow staff, and our viewing audience. This is an update for Recreation, Culture, and Community Services for January. We're starting off, as usual, with special events. And coming up this weekend is our uh, 16th annual Kids Swap and Sell. It runs from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. Admission is free, and there's always a lot of excellent uh, treasures that uh, people find. And so if you, if you have little children who are into Lego and cars and clothing, that sort of stuff, uh, it's a great opportunity to get some reasonably priced um, treasures. Uh, so that does run from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I believe we are still taking a wait list for tables for another room, um, the multipurpose room likely. The main hall is sold out. Very exciting, our horse, the City of Langley horse that was commissioned through the Langley Arts Council is now complete. This is a picture that was taken just before Christmas in the artist studio and it's an absolutely beautiful horse. It, all the horses, the entire herd, is currently located at Willowbrook Mall. Uh, it's running starting today, running through to February the 3rd. So the viewing audience can pop down to Willowbrook and look at all the horses. They are just magnificent. It's just amazing, the, the artists, the talent that's out there. Um, our horse will find its home, final resting area, or its final field will be the Linwood Park, um, which will be great, have great access for everyone to go and see and, and enjoy it. So that is the Horsing Around Langley project. Coming up in February is our uh, second annual Lantern Festival, and this is uh, in partnership with the Langley Arts Council. Uh, it'll be running from uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday, February the 23rd at Douglas Recreation Center. This year they're looking at expanding the event to include entertainment and food. And there will be a series of classes leading up to the festival so you can actually make your own lantern as well. And for more information on this event and the classes leading up to it, please phone 604-514-2865 or check out our website at www.city.langley.bc.ca. Now on to some more of our regular programming. Our winter recreation guide was delivered just prior to Christmas. Registration is ongoing and many of our programs are starting this week and next. So you can pick up your copy of the recreation guide from one of our centers, either Douglas, Tim's, City Hall or the library. Or you can go online and check out our uh, online version as well. And again, the website is www.city.langley.bc.ca. Cookie Monster Preschool. It's hard to believe we're halfway through our current year and we're looking at registration for next year already. So registration does begin February the 4th uh, at Douglas Recreation Center. And just to let you know, our programs did sell out this year, so if you're interested in um, participating either in the three-year-old class or the four-year-old class, um, you need to get in there sooner than later. So for more information, you can phone 604-514-2865. And finally, just a little more information about our Parks, Recreation and Culture Master Plan focus groups. There will be a series of them, but I wanted to highlight three this evening. Uh, the first one is for people who aren't currently participating in any of our programs or using our parks and facilities, we would like to know why. And that opportunity for those people is February the 5th from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. here at City Hall, upstairs in the CKF room. For those participants who are, are using our facilities, there's two other opportunities to come and give your feedback on the uh, Parks, Recreation and Culture, and that's February the 12th, either 4.30 to 6 p.m. or 7 to 8.30 p.m., and both of those focus groups will be held at Al Anderson Memorial Pool in the new multi-purpose room. There will be further opportunities that will be shared online um, and in the newspaper once they're finalized. 
And that's my presentation for this month. Any questions? Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from members of council? Seeing none, thank you very much. We'll move into administrative reports. The first item I need is a motion that Deputy Chief Scott be authorized to attend the Fire Department's Instructor Conference in Indianapolis, Indiana, April 22nd to 27, 2013. Moved by Councillor James, seconded by Councillor Martin. Any questions anyone has? Seeing none, all of those in favor? Opposed, if any, the motion is carried. The next one is policy number CO41, external links on the city website. I need a motion that council adopt policy CO41, external links on the city web media. Moved by Councillor James, seconded by Councillor Martin. Mr. Chung, did you want to just give a bit of a background for this? Sure, I'll just give a brief overview and then I'll pass it on to uh, Ms. Mashada to give a little bit more background. Uh, from time to time, as Council is aware, that we do get asked from different external groups to allow this, uh, them to provide a link onto our website, to their websites, to for promotional purposes or educational purposes. This policy essentially is a guideline that sets out the principles on what is permitted and what's not permitted with respect to the links to our city's websites. And with that, I'll pass it on to Ms. Machada. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot more to add to that, except that um, whatever the topic is that is being requested to have a link on our website will be the responsibility of the department that normally looks after that topic area. And I think it comes as a result, we get a lot of requests to put links on our site to all kinds of different things. I know we sometimes bring it up at at council meetings as well, and this is just to maintain some control because of the integrity of our system, correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all of those in favor? Opposed, if any, the motion is carried. Now we removed item C, so I'm gonna to move to item D. I need a motion that the annual report for the following city committees be received, Community Day, Community Day Parade Committee, Magic of Christmas Parade and Youth Committee. Would someone like to move that? Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Schaefer. Are there any questions on any of the annual reports? Mr. Chung, was there anything you wanted to add? Uh, Your Worship, no, I just want to actually thank uh, council members, staff, and all the volunteers that put a lot of tremendous amount of effort in putting these parades together. It's, uh, it's a lot of work but uh, certainly the community benefits from them. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. So all of those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Councillor Martin, please. Sorry, I didn't thank say you. Just to follow up on Mr. Chung, I was actually amazed at the, the amount of hours um, that our staff have, have put in to, to these events, along with the volunteers, certainly. Um, but, uh, you know, you think that these, these events happen, you watch a parade walk down the street or you go to community day or whatever and, and you don't think about the work it takes to get there. So um, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing and, and we have wonderful staff that, that put their time in on this and, and certainly the volunteers in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other, all those in favor? Opposed if any, it is carried. The next uh, motion I need is in bylaws, bylaw number 2895, final reading of a bylaw to remove park dedication of part of City Park. I need a mover. Moved by Councillor James, seconded by Councillor Martin. All of those in favor? Opposed, if any, the motion is carried. The next one is bylaw 2904, and uh, I would like to just speak to this so that uh, Council is aware why we took uh, item C off. Uh, as you know, um, this would be first and second reading of a bylaw to establish the rules of procedure for council meetings. That was distributed and normally when we do two readings, we have time before third reading for more discussion. Uh, we would also then uh, move into the normal process. Because uh, the majority of council attended a session with uh, the township and the city of White Rock with Mr. George Cuff, uh, in discussions with Mr. Chung and with uh, our manager of legislative services, 
Uh, we thought that one of the things we should do as a result of that is have a bit of a workshop at our next uh, strategic planning sessions on the things that we heard there. Mr. Chung has put together a list of items that we made note of. I'm sure members of council also did. And then what we can do is have a fulsome discussion there, make any changes before third reading, bring it back, and then we'll also have opportunity for further public input. So I think it's a more um, uh, appropriate way to handle this at this stage because when we first brought this forward and our manager of legislative services did a lot of hard work going back over the years to bring what we have so far the session we attended perhaps generated some additional ideas, which I'm sure she'll be thrilled to uh, have us give her some more input on, but I think it's a more effective way to, uh, to move that forward. So with that said, would someone like to move first and second reading? Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Arnold. Questions or comments? Councillor Martin. Just a clarification, and I'm sure it's okay. On uh, the page that we're looking at now, which is page 62, it's the explanatory memo. And um, the first item there says Deputy Mayor from six months to two months, effect of 2014. And then in the bylaw, it, it does say after the election in 2014. So I'm just wanting to make it more clear there if we put effect of December 2014. Sure. It's just the explanatory. That's not part of the bylaw. So. Yeah, it is. I know it is, yeah. But I just thought if anybody is reading, I mean, I when I first saw it, I thought 2014, you know, and then when I went on to read the bylaw, yep, it, it made certain, uh, certainly made sense. Thank you. And I think, um, you know, there, that's one of the reasons that we'll have more chance to, to catch those and make them as clear as we can, for sure. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Chung, did you have anything? No. So seeing none, all of those in favor, opposed if any, the motion is carried with the note that we will take that forward to our strategic planning uh, and blue sky session and then bring it back uh, for third reading with any further changes. Moving on to that, uh, I need a motion for uh, final reading of bylaw 2903, uh, bylaw to amend the fees and charges bylaw in the telecommunications fees. Did I say the wrong number? 04? 05, sorry. Slap me on the mouth. 2905. Oh, great. I have a mover, Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor James. Uh, all of those in favor? Opposed, if any, the motion is carried. There are no motions and notices of motion. Correspondence, there is none. Unfinished business, is there any unfinished business? Seeing none, new business. I do have one item. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to our city administrator through the chair, with the uh, flooding that we've had in the floodplain, uh, uh, significant flooding twice in the last couple months, would it be prudent uh, for the city to get uh, a, legal, a legal opinion on putting the engineering firm that's doing the overpass on notice at all, um, if anything were to come back in the way of flooding because of engineering, would it be prudent for the city to do that? Not that I trust engineers. I mean, look at the new Portman Bridge. So uh, um, I'm not overly keen on that. Uh, uh, I'm just wondering if that's something that maybe the council and uh, senior admin should look at because the, uh, the floodplain in the, the area of Bryden Lagoon has flooded over that pathway twice lately, and that's over the, the main pathway, the one that's actually beside Bryden Lagoon. So that means the, the uh, floodplain was significantly higher than at other times, and other times that I could remember. So uh, just something that I'd like to bring forward and, and see if maybe we should get an opinion maybe you can. Mr. Chung did you have a comment uh, we can certainly investigate that uh, but like staff said uh, in the past um, there has been hydraulic study undertaken by the consultant and the engineers uh, for all the overpasses along the floodplain and based on the hydraulic analysis uh, there is really minimal you know in 
impact to flooding situation upstream of the overpasses. So we'll continue to pursue that with the Surrey's de uh, engineering department and the contractor, uh, the builder of those overpasses. And uh, if there is a, a need, then we'll certainly discuss that with council, whether we should pursue it legally or not. I noticed the, um, I was, uh, went for a walk yesterday close to my colleague's residence on 201A Street and I noticed how high the water level was there because you could tell on the, the uh, vegetation how, how high the level was. So it was significantly higher there as well. So I'm thinking of either the residents in any of those complexes or even uh, it may come back to bite us from anything that could happen on the bypass, which has over the years. So uh, I'm just looking to see if there's and as I said earlier, I don't trust all the engineering reports that were out there. I mean, um, uh, not long ago there was a, an overpass in Kelowna that they had to close the road down, brand new roadway. Uh, back east in Quebec there's uh, overpasses down on the ground because of engineering. And of course, lately the Newport Man Bridge with their engineering studies. So uh, um, just call it the, uh, you know, the, something that we should maybe look at. Thank you. Well, Mr. Chung, I think that, you know, this has been a subject right from the beginning of the project plan and, and uh, uh, what Councillor Schaefer is referring to is uh, our relationship with the project uh, engineers and making sure that we ask the right questions and so on. So I think a report coming back to Council would be in order. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the trails certainly by my my place 201 a street they they were all flooded but i mean that's that's what a floodplain does is is flood and then i have waterfront property when that happens so <laughs> are there any cruise ships that we're going on? yeah right <laughs> i don't know if it puts the value of my place up or not but <laughs> but yeah the the trails all around my place were, were flooded and it rained so hard for for several days um, and actually, I mean, I've lived there just over a year, and that's the first time I've had waterfront property. So it was kind of nice, actually. <laughs> well, and I, I think, Mr. Chung, correct me if I'm wrong, because I did ask the question when I saw the high water levels that that particular event recently, we also had an extreme high tide, which was a record high tide. Mm -hmm. And the Nickelbeckle, because it is a tidal river, uh, can you just uh, verify that that was the situation as well? We will do that. Thank yes. you. Councillor Arnold. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do we have something that measures whether the uh, floodplain is more full than it has been before? Didn't, didn't we used to over before we redid the, uh, the bridge on Fraser Highway? Mr. Chow. Your Worship to Councillor Arnold. Yes, we do have rain gauges and uh, river level gauges uh, along the floodplains that measures that. We can get, get all that information. So we can keep track of whether the floodplain is higher than it's ever been other than, than looking at it and because I mean I know we had a lot of rain too but yeah right. things did look like they were, were higher but so we, we have a way of keeping yes. track of that? Yes we do. All right. Thank you. Um, the last Councillor Hall. Yeah. Um, you suggested that council had attended the uh, session with George Cuff, the uh, individual who uh, helped us with procedures and governance and things. And I had asked a question earlier about how we were financing that, and um, the answer I got back was that rather than the costs coming out of regular council expenses, in that it was an extraordinary event, it would come out of enterprise. Um, I raised the prospect that I thought that perhaps we needed some kind of a motion on council to endorse the spending of the enterprise funds. And we didn't have a council meeting uh, before we actually went to the session. So through the mayor, I was just going to ask a question of staff uh, about the process whereby enterprise funds are accessed. If I can just add before I ask Mr. Chung to speak is in our council procedures the mayor can authorize 
an individual counselor or counselors to attend an event uh, and uh, do that through the Enterprise Fund. I think I sent that note out to all of council. Uh, and this, uh, this particular event was one that I felt fell into that rather than being allocated proportionately to everybody's individual. So I made that determination at the time. But Mr. Chung? Uh, just to add to what your worship is that um, on occasion, council through consensus has approved those expenditure from the enterprise funds. So that's what we have done in this particular situation. And my understanding is that uh, for the session, our share was in the order of $2,600. We don't have the final number yet, I don't no, think, but... but that's around there. But that's why it was being shared between three councils. Okay, I, I'm not questioning it because there was value in this in the session. But I think there's a bit of a slippery slope that we fall into there where I guess there's a discretionary decision whether it's a decision by consensus or whether it's a decision by the mayor of the value of it. I think wherever possible it's better that it come to the table and even if it's retroactive that we vote so that there's public accountability for the expenditure of the funds. Um, otherwise we could just be accessing regular council, uh, council expense accounts and then if someone objects to that then it's, it's not coming out of that. But in that this is a collective, in this particular case it was a set amount of money um, not per person but rather for the collective of council. I think it would be better that we proceed in a manner that has a collective vote so that anyone that did object could at least voice that objection and suggest that no, they might think that it would be better accessed out of individual council accounts. So I'm just wondering whether it might be better just to put that on the next council agenda and vote retroactively or leave this as an, as, I don't know, this was an experience and, and it gives us further thought that we might have that discussion at that future governance and that's what I was going to say. Uh, I've made a number of uh, decisions for individual counselors on individual expenditures that fell outside of their... It was the same when uh, the city covered the cost for council members to attend the chamber dinner because it was a particular night. And I just made that decision and we didn't bring it back as a motion. But I will say every penny we spend, Mr. Light is very good in our financial statements that it's all very public. Um, and so none of that is that anything in that accord is hidden. But I think if council wants to have that decision uh, or that discussion at our session coming out of the, the what I just talked about earlier, I'm more than happy to do that. Okay. Um, the, the item I wanted to bring up, I just wanted council to know that uh, I was invited uh, along with Mayor Watts from the city of Surrey and a few other mayors from across the country by FCM at their cost to go to Ottawa to attend a national summit on uh, the future of policing costs. And uh, it's a summit that originally there was going to be no uh, government representatives invited at all. And through the work of the Contract Management Committee and with the province of BC, uh, we made the comment that it is local governments that are paying the lion's share of policing costs, whether they're municipal or RCMP. And to have a summit on the future of policing costs without those representatives there uh, didn't make much sense. And FCM went to the went to bat for local governments right across the country. So there are, an, uh, I believe, eight of us uh, from local governments uh, invited by FCM to be there. So uh, I will be attending that, uh, and it's a two-day summit this week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I'll bring a report back to council, but it is. Uh, very clear that FCM's position is that the current rate of growth and policing costs are not sustainable whether it is municipal forces or whether they're RCMP jurisdictions. And one of the other main items that we will be talking about is the need for a national policing strategy because currently there isn't one. Uh, if you ask the federal government for a national policing strategy, uh, you would be hard pressed to get something that would be succinct and says here's what the vision of the federal government is on policing. So 
Um, I will report back to Council, but I uh, wanted to let you know that I'm going on not only our behalf, but the rest of the local governments across the country. Any other items? Seeing none, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Schaefer, seconded by Councillor Martin. All of those in favor, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.